I've wanted to build my own amp for years now, and about nine months ago, I did just that. I built a 5e3, or otherwise known as a Tweed Deluxe clone from Trinity Amps. That amp has been amazing. I've been using it a ton here in my home studio, and as things have opened up, I've been able to use it on sessions and live events. Be sure to check out the videos that feature that amp for more clips and just walk through of that process. I mentioned in some of those videos that I was hooked. I loved building it, I loved the process, and in the end, I had an incredible amp, and I immediately wanted to build another one. So I figured this time around I should build something a little different and I reached back out to Trinity Amps about one of their Marshall circuits. The kit came in today. It took right out a week to get here to Atlanta, Georgia from Canada. Pretty good considering it had to go through customs and all of that. I'm going to unpack it, make sure that we have all the parts that we're supposed to and kind of get everything laid out so that I'm ready to start building. Transformer. Oh, it's got my name on it. I think this is the chassis and typically they kind of pack everything up inside the chassis. My guess is this is the faceplate. Got all of our parts here organized. Custom plexi. Switches and terminal strips. There's a light in there, pot light. Knobs and pots. All of our wire. This build is definitely going to be a little more involved than the 5e3. And so I want to make extra sure that I am familiar with the instructions and what needs to happen. As with any build like this, there's a chance that it couldn't work. And so that aspect of it for me um, definitely makes the stakes a little higher. It makes me a little nervous about doing it. But um, as I found with the 5e3, it is so worth it. Um, I have loved that amp. It sounds fantastic. And just firing up an amp that I built myself um, is just feels really good. I take a lot of pride in knowing that I built that amp and that it sounds amazing. Right now I'm just doing the first step of putting on a lot of the hardware for the amp and then I'll move to the transformers and we'll kind of start wiring up a lot of the power um, just the, the power part of the amp and I think there's some initial testing with that to make sure everything's good and then we'll move on to some of the next steps but this is where it all begins so you might notice here there's a couple of extra holes there's an extra preamp tube hole here and then there's this extra hole here trinity offers this kit in a lot of different versions that have different features um, i am building one with two 6v6s they also offer it with two el84s they also offer it where you can switch between 6v6s and el84s um, and that's the reason for some of these extra holes i potentially might add a tube gain stage over here so i'm not going to plug this one but i am going to plug this one because it's not going to be used so Currently, we have three preamp tubes, two 6v6s, and this will be our rectifier tube. Our next step is to install the front panel. It's held on by the pots and different things attaching onto it. So, yeah, we're going to do that. I'm not sure if you guys can see that because of the lighting, but it's all printed on there. Basically, what we'll have... When we get done is a high and low input for each channel. This first channel is just volume and tone. And then over here we've got, you know, a master volume, gain, treble, middle, and bass. Unfortunately, this one does not go to 11. Now I am installing the jacks and I just uh, kind of ran into something, not an issue, just again, one of those things that you either learn from experience or you have to figure out. So the way that these jacks, um, you know, they have these tabs that come off of them right here. And 
they don't fit like up and down so they they go like this if the bottom one actually sticks out from the the bottom of the chassis here and um we were gonna have to chain these together and i was just like well what's the best way to do this and so i have some high quality pictures that i found online through the trinity forum that um you know are of other people's builds that are really clean and really good and and worked um and so I kind of consult them as I'm going through this process. So I saw that they have them sideways like this. So both of them are with the tabs sticking out um, to one side. And so now as I install these jacks, I know that I'm going to face these tabs out. Um, another uh, time that I would use something like that is when I'm doing the wiring, which we'll get into here in a little bit. Just wiring all of the, the power cabling and the... Um, the you know everything that goes to power the tubes and all of that a lot of times it's really helpful for me to consult that just to see how people ran stuff how they kept things neat and clean and yeah i've, I've found that really helpful i did the same exact thing on the 5e3 build where i was able to kind of consult a really good clean build to help me with my wiring and, and figure out how to do that best all right so i've gotten all the hardware kind of put in the chassis uh, other than the, the transformer, but we're going to wire the heater wires first. They will go from this terminal strip over here and then connect to all the tubes. This is essentially giving the tubes power. These are really susceptible to introducing noise into the circuit, so we want to make sure that they're as short as possible. And then I've also cut the uh, wire to length so that I can put it against the chassis. That'll help us uh, have the least amount of noise possible. Um, yeah, this it's starting to take shape now. We're starting to solder and, and get everything in place. So, um, you know, looking at the front panel with all the knobs and the, the pots, it's, um, it's exciting. Just seeing it all start to come to life. Still a long ways to go, but we're getting there. All right, so I've got all the power part of the amp wired up. We're going to test it and check some voltages. All right, everything checks out. I just got done with my favorite part of an amp build, and that's populating the circuit board. This is a part of the process where we're just putting all these components in here. We're putting the caps and the resistors and making all, the, all these different connections. This is a turret board, which is a different style board than you find in the 5e3, but honestly for me is a little easier to work on. One thing that I do when I'm populating the circuit board is that I'm measuring all of my resistors here um, with a multimeter. I don't really trust myself reading the codes and just to double check myself and check my work. I'm measuring every single resistor before I put them on to make sure it's what it's supposed to be. And that way I know that hopefully everything should be right and it should fire up when I when I start it up. The next step in the process is basically attaching all of the wire to the circuit board so that when I install it into the chassis, um, it will connect the board to the pots and the tubes and, and everything that, that it needs to go to. trying to be as gentle as I can with these wires just to make sure I don't break anything and the screw will just screw right down into the chassis it's another nice thing about the the Trinity chassis is that a lot of the <clears throat> connection or a lot of the things that screw and attach to the chassis it's all all the holes are threaded into the chassis so it just just screws right down in there. You don't have to worry about having nuts on there and and um, just more pieces, more things to come loose and whatnot. So I'm going to get these all put in here and I'll probably have to move some wires around and kind of um, clean things up a little bit with the wiring um, as far as them kind of going in the right direction before I start trimming them and soldering them into place. So I came today to go downstairs. It was raining like crazy yesterday. Um, we had a lot of kind of flash flooding stuff going on and 
uh yeah i came up to this there's like water marks around the door down here in our basement and i opened it up and we've got about four inches of water in there right now I'm trying to get my settings right this cooler like floated over here fortunately anything important is up um, I've never had it flood like this down here, but um, I always knew it was a possibility because it's a basement. So there's the ant build over there. My deluxe reverb is right there, fortunately up on a milk crate, but I might have to move the ant build upstairs, um, which is not ideal, but it's a mess down here right now. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna go buy a shop vac, I think. It's a few days later and I've gotten the basement all dried out. Fortunately for me, there's nothing, you know, damaged or anything like that. I've kind of always been of the mentality that it's a basement, it always could flood. There's a hot water heater down here. You just never know what can happen. So I didn't have anything, um, you know, important that was on the floor, or close to the floor. So all in all, it's just kind of a big pain, but I've gotten it all dried out. I went and bought a shop vac and got all the water out. We've been running a dehumidifier to really dry things out. And I think we're in a good spot now. So I brought the ant back down here and I'm jumping back in on it. All right, I think it's done. Got all the wiring finished up here. Try to keep things as neat as I could. Making sure all my joints were solid. Honestly, this was not too bad um, difficulty-wise. It's just a matter of taking it slow and getting everything where it needs to go. I was kind of surprised. After the tweed build, I thought this would be a lot more difficult and it really wasn't. It's just more stuff to do. So it just takes a little longer. You just got to make sure you're following the layout and not skipping anything. The hardest part, honestly, was probably the input jacks. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, I ended up taking the input jacks off to make most of those connections. I soldered the ground wire that passes through right here. Um, I soldered that first with the jacks installed that acted as kind of a spacer and then that allowed me to pull the jacks out and I knew that the spacing was right and I could make the other connections. So now I'm going to plug it in, take some voltages and cross my fingers that it works. A few seconds after firing up the amp for the first time, I saw a puff of smoke. I immediately turned the amp off and began looking it over and discovered that a resistor had burned up. Initially, I was discouraged because I had been really thorough in checking all of my work and, you know, was just confused. I was like, what happened and what did I mess up? Did I mess up anything else? Um, and so I began looking over the amp and I discovered this. As you can see right here, this is a terminal strip right here. And there's a connection that's made on there between a wire and these two resistors. And I initially had that on the center post. Let me see if I can get a better angle. I had it on the center post. I've never worked with terminal strips before, and so I just assumed any post is fine. But that center post goes to ground, and so I just had current going straight to ground, and that caused that resistor to burn up. After moving that connection over on the terminal strip, I was able to find a replacement resistor at a local electronics repair shop and get it installed. After that, I checked everything else to make sure nothing else was damaged or there weren't any other issues, and I fired it up one more time.
I am incredibly pleased with this amp and it far exceeded my expectations. It's super versatile and sounds incredible. As you can see, I put it in a 112 combo. This cab is from Sour Mash and I have a greenback loaded in there. As I was making the demo, which was made with my Two Notes captor and my own personal speaker IRs, I came to find that I really liked the greenback. That was kind of my favorite speaker and that currently wasn't in a cab, so I thought, heck, I'm gonna put it into this. It sounds great. Definitely look for future videos featuring this amp. Um, I wanna do another video that has a few more playing examples and kinda gives you a rundown of all the features and more uh, soloed out playing tones just so you can hear just the amp. Uh, look for that in the upcoming weeks. You might have noticed at the beginning of this video it was labeled paid promotion. And as I typically do with these kinds of videos, I wanna give you a little bit of insight on what that means in this particular case. When I was ready to build another amp, I reached out to Trinity. They were familiar with the videos that I had done for the Tweed Deluxe. I told them that I wanted to build a Marshall next and was interested in doing some videos on this build. They were gracious enough to offer me a small discount on the kit um, for me doing the videos on the build and kind of uh, documenting that whole process. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. Thank you, Trinity Amps. But in no way did they you know, influence the review or anything like that. I was free to say whatever I wanted to. And honestly, I wouldn't have reached out to them to do this and to do the videos on this amp if I didn't believe that it would be a great amp. Um, my experience with the Tweed Deluxe was so good. The kit was put together so well and the instructions that it just made sense that if I was gonna build another amp that I would get it from them. That's gonna do it for this one. If you have any questions on this process or what that looked like, definitely leave me a comment below. Um, check some links in the description for more info and uh, links to Trinity's site and links to the 5B3 build videos and all of that. Um, but that'll do it for this one. Until next time, I'll see you out there.